thank you, thank you very much. This is a, uh, what was that, hello? You'll get the look. <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much, and uh, it wouldn't be right to start this evening without thanking Ibrahim and Raif for the work they do for the Center for Turkish Studies. And I've known them both for a very long time, and the energy and work they put in to this and to every other aspect of their lives for the community, for the rights of people, for human rights and justice is just totally incredible. So thank you very much. Please stand and take a bow. Where's Raif? <laughs> because having the center is something that is incredibly important because uh, all the time I've known Ibrahim, we've been involved in all kinds of political activities, and his mission has always been to reach out to lots of other people so that the open space for democratic discussion, the open space to discuss the history and all the complexities of the history of Turkey um, is here. It's here in the Center for Turkish Studies. And it's been held often in Parliament, but in many other places. And it's been my pleasure and that of my good friend and colleague, Kate Osamore MP, who's here tonight. Thank you for coming, Kate. And thank you for coming back from Turkey, where you've done some good work for justice and human rights. Well done. Kate is a wonderful colleague and a wonderful MP for Edmonton. The issues that are faced at the moment in Turkey are obviously huge. The first is the proximity of the war in Syria, and of course from that, the huge numbers of refugees. The problem with wars is, it's very easy to start them, it's very easy to send troops and bombers in, it's very hard to stop those wars, and the consequences of those wars go on for decades and decades and decades. And so, I think the message we would all agree on tonight is, there must be a ceasefire now in Syria so the bombing can stop. <clears throat> and there has to be a political solution that recognizes the diversity of the country and the rights of self-expression and determination of all the peoples. And there also has to be a European-wide response to the issue of refugees coming from mainly from Syria, but also from other places, because sometimes in Western Europe there is a sense of self-satisfaction that all the world's problems are somewhere else. Well, they're not. There are more displaced people now than ever in the history of this planet. Many of those are in the Middle East, the southern shores of the Mediterranean in Libya, or indeed on the shores of Europe in Greece or in Turkey. And uh, I think the response of Europe at, the very, at its most generous has been patchy, often quite ineffective. And the only country that has taken a substantial number of refugees is Germany. Others have taken a minimal number. And in the case of this country, we've limited ourselves apparently to 20,000 up until 2020 and 3,000 unaccompanied displaced children, most of whom have yet to arrive here. I'm sorry to say that this is a big country, this is a wealthy country, as indeed most of Western Europe is. We can all and should and must do a lot better. These are human beings that are going through a terrible crisis in their lives. And so I will do, we, we will do our best in the Labour Party to make sure there is a better, more humanitarian response to all the issues that are going on. What I'm also impressed by in the Center for Turkey Studies is the um, issues of democracy, freedom, justice, and human rights in Turkey. Now, as one who represents a North London constituency that has people that come from all parts of the world, I'm very well aware of the um, ways in which people are forced into exile, I end up being displaced, and then come to other countries in Europe and make their homes here and make an incredible contribution. So first of all, I want to say, in the diversity of London and all the other major cities of this country, can I say thank you to all those people that have come from various parts of Turkey, Kurdish, Armenian, 
Anatolia or wherever else, made their homes in this country, made an incredible contribution and an incredible economic, social, medical, educational and engineering contribution to the dynamism and success of this country. Thank you very much for all that you do. <clears throat> but it's also about the um, cultural diversity that is so strong and I found it very depressing last week when we seemed to be descending into a national debate about how few foreigners we could have in Britain, how we'd have to name them all while they're here and see how many uh, could be invited to leave at any one time. The reality is that history moves on and people move on with it. There are people from Britain who live all over the world. There are people from all over the world who live in lots of other places. In the modern world, a lot of people travel and make their homes elsewhere. Closing the door, pretending the world will go away, is not going to solve any economic problem. In fact, it is much more likely to lead to a process of economic decline rather than economic expansion. So I think we need to think very, very carefully on these issues before we go any further. And whilst this country has voted to leave the European Union. I respect and understand that decision. I am, however, very determined that we shall maintain a good market relationship with Europe and we should defend the social chapter and the economic rights that we've gained through being members of the European Union. And I hope we will achieve that and I'm very determined that we should achieve that. The last thing I want to say is that um, I've had the good fortune to visit Turkey on many, many occasions and travelled around the country by bus a great deal. And I love bus travel in Turkey because I think the food you get in the wayside cafes is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> it's the greatest food you get anywhere. And uh, what I love about Turkey is it caters for vegetarians like me all the time. So thank you, thank you very much for that. And what I love is the sense of history and the sense of diversity that goes with it. And um, as one who's always supported human rights and democracy, uh, my first visit to Turkey was in 1983 during the military coup or military dictatorship period in order to observe some trials and try and visit people in prison. And I've been to Turkey on many occasions since then, always with those thoughts very much in my mind. And this center that Ibrahim has set up gives a space for that discussion, a space for discussion where the European Convention on Human Rights can not just be something we all sign up to, but something we sign up to and adhere to which does guarantee a right of free speech, a right of free assembly, the independence of the judiciary from the political process, and these things are essential, an essential part of any democracy and any democratic process. And so that is uh, my, one of my very fundamental commitments. And uh, it's also understanding the brilliant role played by many individuals in this, and it's been an honor to me and a great pleasure to sit uh, alongside our guest who sang for us so beautifully earlier on. When I first went to Turkey, Zulfi was actually in prison at the time, so we couldn't meet then. He was, uh, he was otherwise detained and I couldn't get an entry pass. Um, but his contribution in music, his contribution in literature, his contribution in giving people that freedom of expression is really what it's all about. Because music speaks to everybody. Poetry speaks to everybody. Literature speaks to everybody. And he was telling me, and we are discussing this, how he linked up with Mikis Theodorakis in Greece. And Mikis Theodorakis, of course, was the iconic campaigner against the military dictatorship in Greece for a very long time. And so the synergy of two great poets, two great singers, two great musicians coming together in common cause of bringing about peace, of bringing about human rights, of bringing about justice is surely a very strong message. And so this center works to bring people together. This center helps people to understand each other. And I hope this center will have a huge influence on strengthening independence, democracy, 
in Turkey, but also a huge influence on trying to bring about a long-term, lasting and durable peace across the whole region, which respects the diversity, the linguistic diversity, the cultural diversity, and the right of self-expression to people wherever they happen to live, anywhere in the world. These principles are extremely important. And uh, as the leader of our party, we face many challenges. We face many challenges in trying to bring about a more peaceful and just society around the world. We also face challenges about bringing economic justice within this country. And you know what? I'm really enjoying that challenge because it's a challenge we're going to win in both places in order to create that kind of society. And so I would like to conclude by, again, thanking all those that have put so much effort into this, giving us such a very, very warm welcome this evening, and being pleased at the way in which our multicultural society in Britain is so strong. Everyone coming here tonight, recognizing the contribution that this community has made and all the other communities make to a very strong society and very strong democratic base to that society. Thank you very much for inviting me here this evening. Once again, thank you very much, Jeremy, for saying a few words. Uh, we're going to keep Jeremy on stage to present. Uh, we're not quite into the Community Achievement Award. This particular award, uh, which we have two recipients for, uh, is the Cephas Appreciation Award, and it stems from uh, you know, a, a long-term uh, support for the, for the cause um, and a, a continued support. So uh, without further ado, I will pass over to Jeremy to, to come and announce the winner of the first Cephas Appreciation Award. <laughs> Seftas Appreciation Award, it's in a gold envelope, and to make sure there's no mistake, I put my glasses on before I read the name out. Seftas Appreciation Award winner is Zulfi Livanelli.